Torah number seven. And uh, today we're going to be talking about Eye of the Beholder. This is the Gamer's Experience, where I get to share my favorite memories with you. Okay, this uh, this is more than a review, because I'm not just giving you the nitty gritty, but it's much less than a full let's play. We're just going to show you some gameplays and go through some memories together. And I've been going through the top 100 PC games in chronological order, give or take a few games. It's not going to be exactly 100, but it's going to be very close. So, number seven, it's the Eye of the Beholder, or not the, there's no the in French, just Eye of the Beholder, an advanced Dungeon and Dragons title. We might get into Dungeon Hack today as well, we shall see. So, uh, Eye of the Beholder uh, is, uh, is another D&D game. We talked, of, talked about those just a show or two ago with the Gold Box games. And this one, this one came out not too, too, too long later. Um, in some of those gold box games actually the uh eye of the beholder ad and d came out on in 1991 for ms dos and it was it was taken to a number of different platforms i mean there was a snes version a sega cd version uh and a couple of others so uh, we'll be playing the uh, computer version which is available through uh, gog and one of the things i like to do in these shows is is show you some of the manuals um so let me see if i can pull those up and while I'm doing that you know now originally I did play this on the Super Nintendo I didn't get this for the computer right off the it, I got it from a rental store and it was really cool being able to play a D&D game um, on the Nintendo later on I did get a PC version it was part of a CD collection and I felt that it was done a little bit better and smoother there a little bit easier to work around with the with the mouse let me see if I can share my screen with you guys and we'll take a look at the manual but yeah here's the wikipedia entry but let's pull up the the eye of the beholder rule book and just like the gold box i mean the the artwork here is very uh, very similar to the gold box games this is still done by tsr and strategic uh, simulations incorporated so uh the the rule book is going to look very very similar and uh we got a letter of of uh um, marquee or marquee commission letter from uh, somebody with a very fancy title, uh, I bet. And uh, so this helps sets the, sets the backdrop. And you might want to read through this because uh, if I recall correctly, there isn't a whole lot of uh, introduction at the beginning when you boot the game up. This document is a binding commission of service to the lords and sovereignty of the sovereign city of Waterdeep. The bearers of this document are agents of the Lord of Waterdeep and are granted full rights of passage beneath the city of Waterdeep. Any who would dare interfere risks the full penalty of our wrath. Information has been presented to us that there is a plot of foul in our city. Evidence points to the sewers that run beneath Waterdeep. We have no information about the exact nature of the threat, but we feel the urgency is grave. We commission you to find the nature of the danger and to destroy it if you are able. You are granted full rights of Marquet. All treasure, artifacts, or other valuables are yours by right of conquest. Uh, this is made legal and binding by our mark on the fifth day of Minifeth in the Year of Shadows. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool. The... Um, then it gives you a breakdown of how the game works and just again it almost looks like they cut and paste this from from the gold box games with the exception of course of the screenshots and how some of those uh how some of those effects will work but you can expect a lot of uh detail in a D, &D game and uh, a lot a couple things you'll want to read through uh, very similar to gold box games if you're not familiar with the older versions of D, &D you're definitely going to want to read through this uh two or three times they pack a lot of information into these pages and you really need to pay attention to the details so that you don't accidentally gimp yourself in character creation. When you get to the spells, there are less spells than the gold box uh, games, but uh, it's understandable. It's more this is more of a, an action experience. And then we got some more background information. So they fit quite a bit into these into these books. Pretty pretty cool. And then of course you have you know it's not an early school D and D game if you do not have tables yes tables are, are very important there so cool cool there is also a hint uh, clue book and uh when i was farting around with this game uh, earlier uh, i i find uh i find faqs and clue books are a necessity for me uh, there is more detailed information here uh, about the games and the rules that uh, aren't necessarily in uh, the instruction book so that will help you out a bit too. And then 
very important is there's maps. The uh, back back in these days, a lot of these games didn't have auto maps. Unfortunately, this one didn't have auto maps, um, which is a shame. The Gold Box games had some, had like a very rough map. I wouldn't even call it a, an auto map. It's more like an outline. So. Um, it would have been nice if they had gotten that into this uh, dungeon crawling game because these dungeons can get very, very uh, confusing. I'll put myself in the corner there, but they can get pretty, uh, pretty, pretty confusing pretty quickly. The only way, uh, sorry about that, but the only way you'll be able to get through these things is if you're keeping a detailed map by hand or you're using a, uh, uh, you know, some sort of f FAQ or in, in this hint book. So. I've already gotten through the first level. Um, we're going to use the hint here for the second level um, when we play here together today. Uh, solving puzzles is an important part of completing Eye of the Beholder. Oh yes, and I got stuck on a puzzle already on the first one. So, um, yeah. See, there's a lot of numbers on these things. Do they tell you what these numbers are? Boy, look at all those numbers. Yep, there we go. There's the hints. So, as you can see, some of these get really, really big. I mean, huge. So having a, an FAQ handy definitely helps if you're not uh, a cartographer. And this was, the, you know, this, this, the, these games would really pull you into the experience. Let's just boot up so you can see it. So, let's see. Here we go. Eye of the Beholder. I'm going to show you how this looks here. This will take a little bit minute for me to get this set up. So give me one second, and we'll get her going for ya. Do, 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 do. Gotta pick a couple of options. It makes you pick what kind of sound card and stuff uh, you're using there at the beginning. We'll see if we can make sure that we are simulcasting that onto our video here. Or some fancy language to say that, yes, I am in all factuality. Uh, getting that up on there for you guys. Yeah, I'm kind of a little bit of an issue there. We're just going to switch that out for capturing a game. Yeah, let's try capturing the game, shall we? Will this work? Nope, don't think that worked. Let's try a window capture. I think I should have done a window capture. Window capture. There we go. All right, I the beholder, make that nice and big so we can kind of see that. We'll stick me over here in this corner and we'll make it big enough for y'all as I, there we go. All right, playing some Eye of the Beholder today. Make that just a tiny bit better, so here we go. Not a ton of sound and music in this one, but you should be able to hear it when some of it pops in. So we're gonna go ahead and load a game in progress here. And there we go. This is, uh, I've already on the uh, second floor Floor, I believe here and I just gotten here because I wanted to make sure I had a good um, uh, point of reference I think pretty sure so uh, so yeah this is this is first-person uh, perspective as you're going through the dungeon you got your characters right here who have already made up I got a fighter and a cleric uh, we got a rogue and a wizard and the way you attack is when the battle's going on, is you just get to click on these little icons right here. The spells, um, you right click on them and you pick what spell you're going to use. I believe, well, actually, it's probably right click the weapons. I'm sorry, not left click. So doing spells will take you just a little bit longer than just smacking a weapon down. Uh, it's like most adventure games, you just click to pick up the items. And we'll need this, I think, to open up this door right here. Now. Jeez, I really hope I'm where I think I am. It's really hard to even find a point of reference in here. Generally speaking, you, you want to save the game in places where you can easily pick up from because um, it's really easy to get lost. Yeah, let's see, you want to load a save? I guess there's only, is there only one save game? There, there might only be one, one save game there. Huh. I think I just threw the key up there. I'm just surprised there isn't like a staircase because, oh, there it is. All right, so this is where I came down to the second level. And that's going to be hugely uh, important as I'm looking at my hint book here. I'm going to flip over to my, my uh, the hint book. Whoops, wrong book. And I'll put that um, on the side here. I guess I could capture all of this so you guys could see it, but I don't think uh, it'll necessarily help you all too much to see the, the map. So we'll just focus on having the game blown up here while I keep a handy eye on Z map.
So if you're using the number key, I, I pretty much prefer to use the, the keyboard mostly for moving around. You can use these keys down here with the mouse, and you can kind of turn around this way. But if you're using the number keypad, you got to remember to use 7 and 9 to turn because uh, 4 and 6 just kind of causes you to strafe left and right. So I've opened up the door straight ahead, and lots of numbers here. Oh, hey, look, that looks like a deadly little pit. Saving often, by the way, boys and girls, any Dungeons & Dragons game goes without saying it's the best spell in the game, right? Uh, boy, that, that does look like a, a pit. Oh, hey, we got a little lever to pull right there. And we're going to hope that that... Oh, and we got another ladder right there, really? So we got a ladder already going uh, down once again. Looks like that one's going down, or it's going back up. No, it's going down. It's clearly going down. Yeah, going down. Hmm. Well, since I've just gotten here, I think I should explore this floor uh, more. Ooh, another one of those pits. You know, we have uh, we have just recently saved. Let's see what happens if we go into a pit. I don't really see a quick lever anyways to turn it off. Oh, you take some damage. It's not even that much damage. Oh, I probably fell down to level two. Oh, well, that's funny. Hmm. So I have to go back to that ladder if I want to get back up. Oh, hey, potion. Uh, you take a potion of healing. Uh, that sounds like something important for our fighter to hold on to. So each character has their own uh, little little paper doll sheet showing you what you have equipped and where and you can go over here to stats which I have conveniently set to the maximum level you can do that during character creation you do have to kind of pay attention to your food value here that, that can get a little low and you can kind of flip through each of them to see their stats and whatnot. Uh, hit escape to get out of that I seem to be pretty much in the third level now, and I'm trying to... There we go. There's our way back up. So, uh, that was an interesting uh, trip down a little pit trap. I'm not super sure that there... Yeah, because I don't have another key. Do I have another key in my inventory somewhere? Check all my characters, see if we got some keys. We got this scroll right here. Ooh, we have a lockpick. Ha ha! Failed lockpick attempt. Do it again. Oh, the lock appears to be jammed. <laughs> if you keep clicking on it, uh, it might work, and it did. Oh, good thing it didn't break uh, break our tools. Okay, cool. Open up the door with lockpicks. Having a rogue paid off. Validation. I have been validated in my character choice, and I'm heading south, so I'm paying attention to the notes here. There's some numbers. Uh, on the map, but I'm not going to look at what they mean just yet. Oh, looks like we have some writing right here. Not all is as it appears. It's a little hint, another a little vague hint there. And when I hit south, I, I just noticed that my compass has changed to the west. So either I've teleported or it has spun me around. Now, if you played games like Etrian Odyssey uh, on the PC, there's Legend of Gimrock. Etrian Odyssey is on the DS, and uh, the, the series uh, goes on to the 3DS as well. Some of the wizardry games, both on the PC and later on on some of the consoles, uh, could go on and on. But you know, they're uh, you know they're inspired by Eye of the Beholder. I think Eye of the Beholder in turn is inspired by older dungeon crawlers um, that don't immediately come to mind. Part of the older wizardry games actually would be a great example of that. The wizardry games, I want to say, came out. The wizardry dungeon cars would have definitely come out before this one. Though their graphics wouldn't have been uh, nearly as good. So I was heading south, so I'm going to turn back to the south. Yeah, and that's all I did was just spun me around, because I remember that sling, uh, sling being there before. That's usually something you would give to like a cleric or a rogue for a distance attack. Mm, actually, it wouldn't be bad for her. Her. Let me see. It's a sling. Doesn't tell you exactly. I usually have her throwing daggers. You can see she has all these throwing daggers here. Well, she just goes, shoop, throws the rock. Can we? No ammo. We got to have rocks for her to throw. Apparently, eh, I could pick that rock up. I just threw on the ground, off the ground. I wonder if anybody else found any rocks. Nope. We need to find a lot more rocks. It's kind of something you take for granted in a lot of RPGs that there would be rocks lying around for your character to pick up. 
Uh, we'll just put it there. Okay, and then if we sling again, yeah, there goes the rock. So, got to keep putting it back on our character sheet, I guess. Yeah. Now, hmm, there's another rock. It looks like it's holding something down. A hollow laughter echoes faintly. Oh, look, I've been trapped in a room. I want the rock. Who cares? These rocks, by the way, come in handy for um, weighing down pressure pads. Of course, the really funny thing is I got left in room. Oh, look, I got some experience. I started off at level one, and I think right now our characters are doing pretty good. I want to say they're three or four now. So Dort, the fighter, has gained a level. So if we take a look at his character sheet. He is now level four. Apparently we got experience just for running into the illusionary wall room and figuring a way out of there. Yeah, that's nice. The game seems pretty generous uh, with its experience, so that's that's pretty cool. Then we can go this way. This is to the north. It spun me around again, evil little thing. I think I want to go to the west. Dead end? Question mark. This looks like a travel marker. Slimy dream pipe reveals nothing. I'm going to try to go forward through the wall, and it worked. That wasn't really a dead end. That was a fake wall. What do we got here? A scroll of shield. Now, uh, in Dungeons & Dragons, uh, the way your wizards learn new spells is they find them on scrolls or other spell books, and then they can memorize them. So I'm not sure how that would work here. I guess you scribe. Oh, there we go. Scribe scrolls. Uh, select the scrolls you wish to scribe. Armor. And I guess uh, she must already have that other spell. Yeah, the one scroll is gone. So this scroll of shield, I, I don't uh, I don't need to learn it because I already have it in my book, but uh, I could use it to cast it one time if I really needed to. Now, you can rest anywhere in the dungeon if you need to restore hit points, you need to get new spells and the such. Just like the gold box games, you want to select the spells that you're memorizing before you rest, if you've cast them already. Uh, we'll need to get into a fight before we really need that. We'll, we'll show you a fight here, definitely. It looks like there's a little hole. I like to look at that. It's just like any point and click, uh, click game. You can, uh, you can click on things and find stuff. Apparently, any walls with these weird markers are fake walls. Whoa, hello, nurse. Combat. Whack them. Wow, just two hits and they're down. Oh, those weren't too tough. Oops. Just wanted to see how much experience he got. No, not a whole lot. Got about 30 experience from that. So we have a couple of squares here. So it, 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 it pays to look carefully through the walls and look for little markers like this. What an odd carving to place here, it says. Can't go through the wall. Can't go through that wall. Now we'll take a look at the hint book here. This is uh, the, the this one is marked with a on the hint book is marked with a twenty seven. So if I just go to the page with the numbers on it, twenty seven, twenty seven, twenty seven, twenty seven doesn't say anything about twenty seven. So maybe twenty seven isn't all that important. It's pretty cool, actually, uh, where they have the squares numbered, they just have little clues, like, uh, our guide was overcome by sewer gas. He spun around a couple of times and ended up facing the wrong direction. I think that's the clue on the square where I got, I had figured out on my own that I got turned around. So, well, we'll just keep on searching on there. Now, one of these walls before was a fake wall there it is and then we go back over this way and we'll travel to the other side hmm oh it spun me around again that devilish puzzle if you're not paying attention you'll get spun around there we go and let's see here what's around the corner Invisible wall that just leads into nothing. Let's see if there's anything in this hole. Oop, clicking on the hole, nothing. Sometimes we have invisible walls that serve no purpose. It 
See, now there's a clue on here, number 30. And if I look at the hint book real quick, and what does it say for clue number 30? This area is an emergency exit. If the water level becomes too high for the workers to get out, they would step in this area and it would teleport them to the surface. Unfortunately, the teleport is broken down. It will only teleport you to another area within the sewer system. I don't know how we'll ever find our passage out of here. Now, we'll tell you, uh, getting hit with a teleporter uh, trap, which is not completely uncommon at all in these types of games, even Edry Nasi had them. But but here it would be kind of brutal because it, it would be difficult for me to figure out where the hell I'm at even with a map because there really is no compass uh, going on here. Uh, th these games definitely aren't for the uh, the impatient. That's for sure. Uh, oh, 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 we're just working our way through here. It's pretty quiet as far as the monsters go. Oh, hey, arrows. Can always use some arrows. Do, 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 do. Not that we have a bow. Well, maybe one day we'll have a bow. Really? The arrows don't stack? Oh, that kind of... Oh, we got an arrow thingy right there to stick them into. There we go. He's got two arrows now. Yeah. Oh, do, 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 do. Wow. This area's been pretty devoid of monsters. Well, here is a food uh, rations, and we'll need those if we get hu too hungry. Start to see some, some hunger across the group there. Oh, hey, didn't see that earlier. More food. Maybe we should give it to somebody else. Who needs some food? There you go. I think, though, I have gotten myself a, a rotated around again. Hmm. Let's see here. Okay. I think I know where I'm at. Yeah, you, you gotta be careful here. You can easily get disoriented. Evil traps. So we're getting close to where we first came down. A, except I think what it's doing is, I think it's cleverly teleporting me. Yeah, back to, oh, well, that, that is devious. So it's teleporting me back I think where I back at where I came in from. I'm not sure exactly where the teleportation's happening at. Oh, let's try another way. I think you have to do like a figure eight movement here. Yes, these games will will test your your patience as well as your puzzle solving skills apparently. Or maybe if I just use the invisible walls that I saw around here to get past the teleporter traps. There we go. Not too, too hard. But that brings us back to the beginning of that floor. Hmm. Let's see if we can pick this lock. Pick the lock, pick the lock. Da -da 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 there we go. So we have successfully picked that lock and the door has opened. So we'll see what's up here. And we got our little writing on the wall. Only the strong shall pass. Ooh, ominous. And we got a tiny little button right there. That sticks out a little bit. Really? Did that door just open up like one inch? Ah, the party forces the door. It does pay to set your strength score really high. Let's see. So we've gone past this door. Oh, and look, there's another door, and there's a little bad guy on the other side of it. Kind of funny if we could just smack him through the wall. Got an E button. You yep. got a little dagger right there. One of those odd, odd, odd. Can't open that door. Odd carvings. Uh, 
Let's take a look here, see if there's anything we can find. Hmm. Yeah, this thing is stuck down. Nothing in the drain pipe. Let me see here. See, we start off right here. Hmm. I'll look at the clue book here and see if I can figure out where that secret is at. I will look that one up. I'm not really seeing a big help there. Level one, level two, there is a secret passage. There is a secret passage here, but we're unable to find a lever or button that opens up the wall. So they know there's a secret passage there. They don't know how to open it up, so it stays a secret. This is not a very helpful hint book. Well, we still have one area we can go to, and that's the floor below, right? So let's head down there and see if there's some clues down there. Good place to, to save first, though. Let's save before we go deeper down. Deek. And there's that hole we fell down earlier. That's where we found a potion. Lots of holes waiting to swallow a party member. Oh, actually, at first blush, there isn't anything else to this area, but just a place to drop off adventurers who fall down holes. Not really see anything sticking out of the walls here. Hmm. Well, okay. Hmm. What if we flip that lever back? Does that help out that door any? Nope. Well. Well, I'll tell you what, I done secreted out this one pretty good. I'm about to go for an official uh, FAQ on this one. Oh, we can just force that one over if we click on it enough. Mental note, click on something enough. Oh, Kyle uses the power to turn on dead. I didn't even try it, he just did it automatically. We can find all kinds of weapons and stuff. That's a short sword. Looks like a nice little axe there. Um, oh, maybe that was his sword. Maybe he lost it. Hey, what does this button do? Oh, I guess it's where you put the food when you want to eat. Hmm, it's a potion of nobody knows. Anyways, that kind of gives you an I, uh, idea there. Wish and I'm back. Took a little break to clear my head and grab myself some uh, angry orchid here, hard cider. Usually don't go for this stuff because it's a little on the sweet side for me, but 
you know, for tonight it will do. So we were trying to figure out how to, to move forward a little bit. And while I was getting a drink, I did happen to peruse, uh, peruse an FAQ or three and uh, realized that I was missing something that I probably should have seen, you know. I don't really hold it against the game if I read an FAQ and the answer I see in the FAQ is something I should have been like, oh, I should have got it. I was a little too tired. Didn't fart around with it enough. But it has to do with right here at this pit. Um, we've been stopped by this pit here. If we go forward, as you might remember, we fall down and we have to climb back up. And we just end up right back here again. So the question is, how do we move forward? Well, if you look there, there's a, there's a pressure plate. The, and I actually didn't find this at FAQ. I found this in the hymn book that I was referring to earlier. So... Um, yeah, all we have to do is kind of throw one of those uh, stones at it, and the way you throw stones is you pretty much just release it on screen. He throws it, and boom, lands there against the pressure plate. <laughs> Who would have thought? So, that takes care of that particular hole. Doesn't do anything about that hole, or that hole, apparently. But uh, at least we'll get to move uh, forward here and see what else we can find. You know, I totally forgot to open up the, uh, the map. Hmm... Looks like we got another hole here, but got this really obvious thing here that apparently opens up another hole, but at least lets us get through here. And we find some more rations. Yum. So a game of exploration, a, a game of puzzle solving, and I this, <clears throat> this is like second second floor, and so far nothing too difficult. I said I should have been able to figure out uh, that last puzzle. And I'll just go ahead and open that way back up. And apparently we've got a little puzzle thing going on here with pit traps and the such. A little puzzly thing to figure out. Oh, looks like we got an alcove. We got some more rations. Well, it's kind of interesting is you kind of hear something dripping in the background. Oh, a silver key. We might need that later. Of course... Now that I figured out how the rogue can uh, pick locks, and I still got two lock picks there. I'm not super sure I need to worry too much about keys. I'm not sure if the lock picks can break in this game, like they could in some of the other D and D games. Seems like. That one stays closed, even though there's nothing uh, on that sensor. And then if you jump on the sensor, it closes back up again. Hmm. Okay, do do do. Pretty sure. I mean, I could try to fall back down the hole. Pretty sure that just puts me in the room. Yep, with lots of pits again. Which might be part of solving the puzzle. Because now we're back here. Hmm. to kind of figure our way through here see if there's anything that we're missing doesn't seem doesn't seem like much see that opens up a hole right there and closes that hole here opens up that hole behind us and we got two holes there. We got another hole here. Holes, holes everywhere. Clearly a fiendish, fiendish puzzle to figure out. Well, I think this calls for the help of another hit book because apparently I'm still missing something there. So hold on one second. I'll be right back. And I'll pull open the file here somewhere. I've got it on my computer.
Yeah, mental note, if you're playing this game, gotta keep that hint book handy. Very, very important. Ah, uh, yes. Hold it close. Hmm. Well, that's one of the nice things, though, about uh, GOG. You just get so much with it, including that, uh, including hint books a lot of times that were released around that time. And yes, you can use an FAQ, uh, and, uh, but, you know, having the original hint book, there's the hint book right there, kind of blown up a little too high, but having the original uh, hint book uh, is very, very helpful. Hey, I wonder if I can show you all the hint book while I look through it. I think I can. Clue book. There we go. So you can you can be going through the hint book with me. Well, except apparently it takes up uh, too much of the screen there. Oh, well. We'll get over here and we'll see that we are currently in level two right there. And we'll see. Can I scroll up a little bit for you? Yeah. So it's probably hard to make out these numbers, but we're right in this area right here. And there's some notations. We went down there, we picked up a stone. I uh, picked up rations, I believe. And there's a whole bunch of uh, pit traps around this area. Uh, those pit traps are probably corresponding with some of these holes around down on one of these other areas of the map here. We got 22, 17, 23, 18, basically 15 through 22. So if you go down here, and here's level two. Well, you don't kind of see it, but yeah. <laughs> if we could just hit the pressure plate beyond the pit, I knew the pit would close. I wonder how heavy our guide is. And that's where that's where I saw the clue for, for how to activate, uh, activate that. Fortunately, it doesn't really seem to give a whole bunch of other hints of how to move on from there, but I'm not looking at this map. I'm not seeing a whole bunch else, you know, else there. So notation at number eight. Let me see if there's a notation for eight. Hmm. The whole else, we just have to see if we can figure out how to go a little bit further on our own here. Might need that rock to get back out. Let's see. Oh, helps if I change the camera back to the game, right? Sorry about that. And there we go. All right. Yeah, you got to worry just a little bit because I'm sure the more I walk around, the more food I consume. I'm sure that's not helping matters out any. Oops, actually went back up to the first floor. Not my intention. Go back down. I really feel like there's more area to discover on this side. There's a button right here, which I thought I pressed that before. Oh, there's a bad guy. We beat him before, I believe. Come on over here, buddy. Daddy's, uh oh. There we go, smack smack. Cause really took the weapon off his hand there. We're gonna cast a magic missile. Oh, he died first. About to cast a magic missile on his ass. Oh well. <laughs> daggers for. Look, she got a ton of daggers. Now. Don't know what this potion is here. Notice it just says potion taken. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that. And does he have. Nope. I believe. Let me see if I can camp here. I believe we got. No, no identify spell. Usually in Dungeon Dragons, there's, a, there's an identify spell at first level for wizards. I think that might have been later later versions of the game. Oops. So we have this gate here, and there's a button behind it. Just fair, I click on it a bunch just in case it's one of those things you gotta click on multiple times to open. 
So yeah, there's supposed to be um, you know, usually there's a button or something to open these things or a keyhole. Hell, it might even just be the moss. You never know with these puzzles sometimes. You think getting past the bad guy right there would have provided some sort of clue. But apparently pressing that button doesn't really help a whole metric ton either. So I'm taking a look at the map here again. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to break down and read a look at a fact because uh, the, the handbook apparently while it's cool and flavorful isn't exactly helping me out a super super ton here I, I just must be missing something super obvious I'm just going to take a look at the map one more time to see if I can figure out what it is and it's just not hitting me I think I've explored every area that I can and I'm running into these dead ends So yes, you are getting the full eye of the beholder experience here because for some of us that means looking up uh, <laughs> uh, FAQs, right? And trying to figure out where to go next. Luckily, the guys at FAQ have our back. Level two. And go east, use the five, a silver key. Now go south, open the door, watch out, false walls. Finally go north. Go north again until you find another door. Click on it a few times to open. Go forward, open the door, take items. Now go to the direction of the entrance, but this time use the path to the left. All right, so we're going to... This, this, this FAQ is pretty straightforward in how it's written. So it says go forward, go toward the wall, and... But this time use the path to go left. You'll find a stone dagger there. Leave chamber with southern exit. Go north, go north again until you find another door. Click off, go forward, open the door. Go towards the entrance, but this time head left. Ooh, strange writing. Well, strange writing usually means you can go through a wall. Only the strong shall pass. Well, that's because I use my strength to open up the bars. Boy, I hate to think you have a party of weak characters and you couldn't get past those bars, but you'd be stuck. You can roll up a strong character, I suppose, and try to get through it. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I guess I'm officially stuck. Maybe I, the Beholder, has beaten me, because even with a, a fact, I'm a little stumped. Oh, there's a cool little thing that FAQ mentions. Let me go back over here. Uh -huh. What a hard start. <laughs> oh, the dagger fits the hole. Oh, my goodness gracious. See, it's, a, it's another one of those things. It's like... Um, I, I don't know why I didn't, didn't think of that before. Um, shoot. There's a dagger-shaped thing. You put a dagger in it. It opens up the door. And, and we've seen a few of these, so I'm not sure what the other ones do. Uh, shoot. But there we go. We've opened up the way. Huh. Like I said, some of these puzzles are just a little silly. I mean, just... So, a little Phil pet peeve here. And it's probably why I didn't, you know, rush out and buy Eye of the Beholder when it first came out. I mean, I like the game. And it's a part of my history. And I've had some fun with it in the past, so I figure I'll share it with you guys. But, you know, you can like something and still have some things that make you unhappy about it. One of the things, one of the things that, that, that makes Phil a little cranky in games are RPGs with strong puzzle elements. And this is why. Because if there's a puzzle element that doesn't click with the person playing the game, it can completely stop their progress. Now, nowadays we have FAQs, but back when I was your age, we would, we would, we would play these games and not have an FAQ, and you would spend hours 
uh, you know, clicking on crap and not being able to figure out what the hell to do next because it just didn't occur to you some of this stuff. I mean, some of you guys are sitting there going, yeah, Phil, dagger shaped. I've been yelling at you 500 times to put a dagger in it. But, uh, yeah, you know, I like the game otherwise, but yeah, this is one of those things. It's one of those things that drove me crazy with Dark Spire. We won't talk about Dark Spire. Dark Spire's evil game. Well, these uh, these combats have been super easy. I've not really had a chance to show you guys the spells, um, just because everything dies before I, you know, can uh, can get too far there. Ooh, more rations, very important. Got another potion. Oh, that one says potion of giant. We have no clue what that one potion is though. Still, ha ha. So that's that's my only uh, problem with with and, and it's a it's a pretty much a staple thing with a lot of these puzzle games. Uh, with that being said, I I felt like I got a lot further in entry and Odyssey. Where there's not doesn't feel like it's so much puzzles there. It's just figuring your way around and mapping everything properly. But this is one of those games where you gotta pick up the key over here, put in a lock way over there, and activate a switch over here. But uh, especially with some of these weird things like put a knight dagger in the dagger hole. I should have seen that. Yeah. Kind of makes me wonder what's in some of these other dagger carving thingies that I've seen all around. Maybe they're hiding some other secrets from me, because there's a few. Of course, finding them might be a little difficult. Wasn't there one uh, on this pit trap dealie here? What does that reveal, huh? Let's remember, we got through here. And then... Go ahead and close that one again. But I think it was... Could be wrong. I swear there was a dagger, dagger carving around one of these walls. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, her food's in the yellow now. That's that's probably something I should probably pay attention to. Yeah, I'll worry till she starts complaining. I'm sure they start complaining. I'm hungry. Feed me. Oh, maybe it was to the south of that. Yeah, you're really meticulous about this game. You would be uh, taking notes. <laughs> I better just leave the rock here. Too bad I need rocks for my sling. Watch your step. I know I've seen more of those dagger things. I'm going to find them too. That's the false wall. I remember going through here. Just try to remember if I saw. Aha! There's another one of those dagger things. And you know what I have? I have lots of daggers. Dagger fits. The dagger fits and nothing happens. Well, it may not happen in this part of the dungeon. But for all I know, I've opened up something way on the other side of the dungeon. Okay, where you got a dagger on that one. Can't stick a dagger in it twice. But yeah, these games are definitely about exploration, solving your way through puzzles. Definitely not for the impatient, but uh, it does. It's really cool because it's just you against this big, huge, you know, dungeon. There's also a lot of dangerous monsters in here. I haven't run so many to me in this video because it just seems like they all die so quickly. Uh, but generally, some of those fights get really, really tough. And, and again, saving early, saving often is your best friend there. You'll definitely want to do that. Uh, but I, one limitation of this game, uh, aside from the fact that it doesn't have an auto map, is you've got exactly one save slot, boys and girls. So use it wisely. And just going to, ain't been here before. work my way through these little hidden walls here and we'll go ahead and save right here like I said always save someplace where you're familiar so you don't get too lost but definitely gives you this impression that you're in a dungeon you could get lost you could get eaten by a monster 
We did a really, really good job of that. Just wish it had more than one save game. We saved the game right there. And we'll close that one. Now, we will close that game in just a second there. And we'll flip off from window capture. You know, I think I got some time. I hope y'all don't mind an extra long video. I think we'll just dump in and show you around a dungeon hack really quick. So there was three Eye the Beholder games. This is just the first one. There's a couple more. They're very, very uh, similar. Can't remember if they ever got to better graphics or not, but the gameplay, very solid across all three of them. And like I said, unless you're super patient, you're going to want an FAQ to work your way through. And with an FAQ in hand to rely on when you get to some of those stuck points, the game can be kind of enjoyable. Especially if you're a fan of the D&D &D series, the D&D &D rule sets, you're going to feel right at home. I prefer more of the gold box games because there's less of a puzzly mechanic to those. You're not going to run into too many. You might get lost in some of those places because the that map thing turns off. But you won't... Uh, um, I picked the wrong thing there. You don't want that. That's my FAQ. There we go. So, we also have, but Dungeon Hack came out later on. And Dungeon Hack was, was uh, took took the whole I the Beholder formula to a new level. And I'll tell you a few of things it has after I go over some statistics. Because we're all about statistics. So Dungeon Hack came out in 1993. It was developed by Dreamforge uh, Entertainment and then published once again by Strategic Simulations, uh, you know, for DOS uh, and the such. And as you're going to see, it, it's the same three-dimensional. It's got a little bit of a better graphics. But what the really, probably what was really, really awesome was that it randomized everything so you had random dungeons and you could you can set we'll, we'll show you why why talk when we can show you this is the gamers experience so let us help you experience it so we're gonna do it now first i gotta load it up that takes a microsecond or two and we gotta flip over our camera to that screen now the really funny thing is that so you can kind of see it there in the box already we'll go ahead and we'll get rid of the display and we'll just pop in a whole window for you because that blows it up to where boom boom and you kind of see it actually looks kind of squished doesn't it oh uh, well maybe well i think it's supposed to look a little squished there so i've already i've already got a game that i've been working on here but let me let me just show you when you go to uh, well, we'll just choose a character. We're not going to create one, but if if we'll just pick one really quick. Uh, okay, whatever. Who cares? I want to show you the the sliders here. So you can pick easy, moderate, or hard. But pick custom here and check this out. So Dungeon Hack uh, creates this this three D puzzle, uh, three uh, D dungeon crawling slash puzzle solving slash actiony dungeon for you to take a character through and i mean boy you get to pick everything from the dungeon depth which goes from 10 to 25 floors to how many monsters there are the treasure food availability are there illusionary walls a lot of those things that tick fell off you can just turn them off you can just you can just turn them off do you need lots of keys do you need magic traps pit frequencies hints magical zones do you need water levels multi-level puzzles oh my gosh turn those off imagine you have to find a key in one level use it all in another level do you want to encounter undead? Uh, you know, how fast do you consume your food? How difficult are monsters? I'm not super sure. An FAQ would probably tell you what magic power is, but uh, and then how strong poison is. I would imagine that means more to damage your character than anything else. Character death real. Uh, boy, who probably can't reload your save game. That might be hard mode. And then whether or not enemies have uh, spells. So you get to set all of these different sliders to create your own unique experience and then the computer is going to randomize it here and you can save this seed right here you can write it down and you can send it to your friends and they can load up the game and if they put in that exact seed number they will play your exact same dungeon and you can see who gets further so that's pretty cool you can see that as i change these some of the numbers in the in the seed change uh i'm not really sure 
what that ra I think that random right there. Well, maybe that's when we load the game. But um, let me continue my game that I already have. Gosh, is this another one with just one? Okay, phew, more than one save slot. Yay! So one thing that is a little bit of a downer for me with this game is that instead of getting a party of four, you only get to play one character. So it probably pays to play a multi-class character so you keep all your bases covered. Playing a fighter means you don't have a whole lot of healing. Playing a wizard means you don't have a lot of strength and and, and such. You have to be able to do it all in, in dungeon hack, I, I would believe. And uh, and as you can see here, we got the inventory that looks very, very similar to Eye of the Beholder inventory. Looks really, really cool. Got lots of things to play with here. But, uh, and, and you can see I've collected a lot of items as I've been working through this dungeon. But one of the interesting things here is auto map. Yay. Now, I wonder if this will let me see the other floor. Maybe I have to actually go to the other floor to show you the other floor. Let me go to the other floor real quick. Can I do that? Can I go to the other floor? So I went through this first floor by myself. It took me probably about 20 minutes. Got kind of stuck in a couple of places here, but you can see this huge map. And, oh, looks like there's more creatures. I generally kill everything I come past, so I want to say it has reseeded this dungeon. I'm not super sure how to get past that door, I think. It's not too far to go to. We can see if we can, if I can have any luck here. So, similar to the other game, this one has some light puzzle solving as far as, like, things fitting into holes, levers you got to pull keys nothing too nerve-wracking here oh well that doesn't look too hard to open and here we go we got some monsters here and one was already whacked me for a chunk of my life there so i i got kind of spells here i'm gonna cast cure light wounds and cure myself up there you can take a look at my character i'm a fighter cleric so i, I got uh, the healing spells could turn undead too. I could hold people. I should have held them. Oh well. Pray for spells. Zero four spells available. Done. If I rest, I'll get my cure light wound spells back. All right. Let me take a look here. But yeah, this this one for me, this one plays a little bit more fluidly, only in because it doesn't seem like any of the puzzles are as devious as I the Beholder. Well, probably because I turn all the sliders down. But so far, it's been a pretty enjoyable experience, and it looks like I've mapped uh, just about all of the first floor here. Also, there's this print button. Not really sure what that does. I don't think I want to find out. Uh, or you can save a disk. <laughs> save that map to disk. Share it with your friends. Actually, this isn't a bad idea for maybe running your own D&D &D group, huh? Put a little indications in a few of those rooms. But for the most part, gameplay is the same. Unfortunately, with the unfortunate uh, side effect that that are uh, the unfortunate characteristic that you only got one player. I like having four players. When they did a uh, future kind of, I don't know if remix is the right word, but inspired games like I the Behold. Or, um, <sighs> Hold on, it's gonna come to me. Etrian and Odyssey or legend of grimrock that's what i'm thinking of legend of grimrock very very much inspired by the eye of the beholder series at least they kept it to four and five characters i like having a party cobwebs uh oh now you can see on that map a monster just helped himself opened up that door right there oh and, and he looks he looks pretty ugly i don't know if whole person's gonna work on him Well, it looks like I got rid of him with a solid blow to the head. Having uh, cheaty health, I mean, uh, maxing out my strength, I mean, <laughs> really really does help when you're swinging a mace. But there's definitely, there's, there's catacombs to comb through and puzzles to be solved. But I definitely feel like 
this game is a little bit more straightforward. Well, can't get through there just by clicking on it, apparently. Don't need to. Ooh. He's not very nice. See, just, I don't know. When you're playing by yourself, the game plays pretty much, I mean, you, with just one character, keep saying by yourself. Of course you're playing by yourself. But your options are painfully limited. I mean, if you're a cleric like I am, I grow weaker. Oh, great. He's some sort of... He's poisoned me or some kind of crap. Diseased me, maybe. He is one tough mother. Well, finally did three points. He might have hit my strength. Yeah, as you can see here, my, my strength's taking a big hit. Which is most unfortunate. Oh, my gosh. I was flanked. I didn't even realize it. Not two of them. Ah, but I've gotten a gold ring off of him, and that's what matters most. You know, one of the things that kind of eludes me about these games is how do you, if you're not playing a class that can detect magic uh, or identify magic or whatever, what do you do about things you don't identify? I guess you could try it on, see if it's cursed, cast your safe spell game. So you got a tech magic spell right there. You probably have to cast a spell first. Get rid of the spell. Okay. Now let's camp. Pray for spells. Nope. What, how do I get rid of the spells? Oh, there we go. Cure light wounds minus one of those. Give me one detect magic. I do have protection from evil. I probably should have cast that. Done. Rest. And break camp. Then if we cast detect magic. You see all these items that are blue are magical. So this ring that I picked up is indeed magical a lot of times those uh rings can help your armor class get an armor class of one so let's put on the other ring still got an armor class of one so lord only knows what kind of ring it is got magic eye magic mace they they really need to give me like a detect uh identify magic item spell it's not something i know if clerics have anywho but, uh, so this is the Eye of the Beholder slash Dungeon Hack series. It was definitely super, super fun for his time. Now, does it hold up well today? Not a whole lot, just because there's games like, I mean, Etrianasi on the DS, can't recommend that one enough. Uh, Mike Mickey will tell you from the RPG Backtrack, we love that series. And, uh, and, and the such. The uh, Legend of Grimrock has also got better graphics, you know, so that it does that part better. Whether or not the puzzles and in the long run, it's as satisfying experience as I the Beholder. You'll have to ask somebody who's actually played them both all the way through. I do not happen to be uh, that person. But as far as which one I like the most, I did enjoy my time with Legend of Grimrock just a little bit more. So if I'm stuck on an island, I'm only playing one of those games, I'm going to go ahead and play uh, Legend of Grim Rock. Actually, I'm gonna play Etrian, Etrian Aussie, but there's a number of other dungeon crawling games, and we're gonna we're gonna go. We're we got a couple couple coming up. You know, of one of my future shows, definitely slated to be Wizardry Eight, which is one of the most fun uh, type of dungeon crawling games. Now, unlike I the Beholder, you're not spending the entire uh, time in Z Dungeon. There's some overworld and stuff that connects it, but it's very much along the lines of the first person perspective. Monsters pop in front of you, a few puzzles here and there but done very very well and it's very very addictive and I, I just enjoy the hell out of that game so that one's going to be on a future uh, rpg backtrack there's some other games along these lines uh too that you can get on gog like uh, mesmer bronzen and a number of them uh, other ones that you can get as well so if you do like i the beholder you do like these type of games not only do you have a full trilogy to get through but you got some other ones as well so i hope you've enjoyed uh taking this trip uh with me and our next show oh I believe it is F F one seventeen A Stealth Fighter, and I'm going off of memory here, so don't quote me on that. I hope you had a good time climbing through some dungeons and getting just a little frustrated with me in some puzzles, but we got through them thanks to those wonderful people who write FAQs. The answer is right in front of me. Until next time, have fun playing video games, and I'll see you on the next Gamers Experience.